you see you today as a local hotelier you're competing against the big brands you're saying so i actually meet a lot of owners who want to set up a branded property and they ask for my help in helping them get the brand in india all the you know the great c towns is where hotels are coming up we don't count the tourists coming by a road border if they are from india foreigners come by road border we count because of an immigration process problems you know the biggest problem is currency getting currency is not available at the border we don't have any currency exchange at the border Hello and welcome once again to nepaltraveler.com. Today in our travel trade talk series, we are joined by a very eminent hospitality expert with vast experience in hospitality in India, in Nepal, in the region. He is heading the hospitality for the Dolma Consultancy UK. He is handling a lot of tourism projects. He is also involved in bringing a number of international brands into Nepal in the hospitality sector. We are very happy to welcome Mr. Paul Majumdar on our show. Welcome, Thank sir. Thank you, Terence. Lovely meeting you, and uh, great work you're still doing with Nepal Traveler. I still remember the old days when you used to write columns for newspapers, and now you're running such a successful media channel for tourism. And I think great thing you're doing for the country. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much, sir, because you have been a big support when when we started our print magazine. Uh, That's right. The, in-flight magazine. Correct. You were the one who made it into an in-room magazine by <laughs> demanding, no, I also want it. And that has opened the whole market for us actually. Correct. Now we're in almost in every hotel. Yes. So to start with, sir, how do you see the situation for the hospitality in industry in Nepal at the present? There are a lot of challenges and there's a lot of opportunities. To start with the opportunities. So, you know, Nepal has always had challenges, all right. And, um, uh, but I think it's the land of opportunities because we barely discovered a small fraction of what tourism Nepal has to offer and, and I think and it's growing, it's growing a lot. The good thing is that the tourism numbers are back and we see month on month growth. I mean now we are in the nearly in the middle of August and July and August is virtually no tourism Close. time but even then hotels are reporting decent occupancies. Some of the hotels in the, in, in the city in Kathmandu and also in our border towns, you know, uh, they pick up a lot of business for the weekend. And I think that's pretty good. When we come to the city hotels, I think there are a few challenges that perhaps the other hotels don't face. I, I believe Pokhara is doing pretty well. Yes. So what could be some of the challenges, especially for the city hotels, Kathmandu hotels uh, that you foresee at the moment? See, um, it's a, you know, how I put it always, it's like a chicken and the egg story. You know, we haven't upgraded our product. See, I, I do understand that all tourism entrepreneurs were hit very badly by COVID and we were slowly recovery, even 2023 was a recovery year. But you had to upgrade the product, you had to upgrade the services and that unfortunately has not happened. And one of the biggest challenges is staffing. You know, we, we let go of a lot of people during COVID and poor people actually had nothing much to do except going back and even the associations cut the salary very, very badly of a lot of employees. So many people just left the industry and they're not coming back. They've got set into doing something else. Their families have got used to living a different lifestyle. So today the biggest challenge which city hotels face, especially in Kathmandu, is a huge shortage of staff. And with new properties opening up, even the people you have are going. True. So, so that is, I think, one of the biggest challenge. The second thing, of course, is business. You know, the way the industry does business has completely changed post-COVID. It's all digital. You will get a maximum amount of your business through digital. Uh, and if you're not there, and, and you know, and there means not that you're just listed in some sites, but you're actually working actively on digital marketing, that you will not get to 
meet the customer when he's taking his decision. And today, most decisions people take on their mobile phones. So if you're not there when he's taking decisions, it's not going to happen. And that, I think, is a large lesson which a large part of the tourism industry and especially the hotel industry in, in Kathmandu needs to do. You see, you're today, as a local hotelier, you're competing against the big brands. And big brands have a lot of marketing muscle. They are right there and they spend a lot of marketing dollars because they don't sell only Kathmandu. They also sell New Delhi, they sell Tokyo, they sell Singapore, uh, Malaysia, and they're there everywhere. Digitally, and, they're very strong. Yes, they're very strong. And digitally, you know, each large chain competes with each other. So, moment you put, say, a Google search for Kathmandu, all the chains will get listed immediately. So, how do you compete against something like that? So, you have to be very innovative, you have to be very active. And it's no more left to, you know, my son or my daughter made my page and once in a while they look at it. That's not going to work. So if you're not there where the customer is taking a decision on his accommodation, it's going to be very difficult for you to get business. And uh, really, uh, the business has not come back, you know, the series business. We used to get traditional era business, which the travel agents used to take care of, the series business. That has, is making a very, very slow comeback. China hasn't started. China, we are not seeing the arrival numbers from China, which was the second largest market for Kathmandu. In 2009. Yes, yes. yes. So that's not happened. Yeah, there are a lot of Indians coming in. But again, it's a very differentiated lot. You have the religious tourism, they have a different agenda. You have the weekend tourism who want to party, they have a different agenda. You have the regular leisure people who are coming, you know. So it's, a, so again, you know, it depends. Are you there or you're not there? And I think uh, also with our national tourism organization, really a lot in limbo. So that also has made a huge impact you know, in terms of our not being, uh, you know, able right. to market Kathmandu, Nepal and how it goes forward. Frankly, do you see also in Kathmandu perhaps uh, an oversupply of rooms? I wouldn't say all of Nepal, but certainly in Kathmandu. Uh, so, Terence, a uh, lot of people say this and yes, if you count in terms of sheer room numbers, they've gone up. I mean, just this year in 2024, in the first seven months, you had four international branded five-star hotel products opening. You know, there's the Hilton, the Holiday Inn, the Holiday Inn Express, the Lemon Tree Premier, and they've all opened in the same market. So, yes, in terms of number of rooms, the supply has gone up. But you also have to realize that at the same market, you've got the Marriott and the Hilton operating at $160 plus plus. So that's not a market, that's not the kind of rates we could ever sell, you know, when we were in a low down market. I remember even two years, 2019, if you look at the July, August rates, they'll probably over around $80 and the market hasn't doubled. True. So we got to realize that today we are attracting a different level of market, which was earlier not coming to Kathmandu, which is in that if they're paying $180, $190 for a room, they'd probably spend another $70, $80 on their food exactly. and maybe some more ind ind indulgences so that that $240, $250 market is going to this product, which was not there before. The Solti has done huge amount of renovation from the time when I was there last. Exactly. They've got brand new spaces. They've upgraded their product greatly. That's made a huge difference. The Yak and Yeti, half the hotel is under renovation. They're putting in brand new rooms. The Everest Hotel renovated about 65, 70 rooms. So, you know, all this changes is pulling in <coughs> business, which you can stand in competition against a brand new branded product. Brand product. Very surprisingly, the Buddha Nilkant, uh, you know, where the Lemon Tree Premier is, I've been, I've been there on two or three events. I was very surprised because the road is so narrow, accessibility is so bad. It's and I'd wonder, you know, why would someone want to go there at night? You don't even have street lights yeah. on the way. But that hotel is sold out on so many days in August. I was talking to a gel manager, I told him, you must be in a cool place enjoying a retired life. He says, come on buddy, come and see what's happening. Packed. Packed. So, you know, so today when you work with international brands, they're getting in the business for you. They have, you know, we, I signed up quite a few hotels and yes. they have performance ca uh, contracts, you know where they have a budget which the owner approves and the ownership is strong, they understand the business or they have very strong owner's rep. They really go after the brand and make sure they get the business, they deliver the business, the guest goes back happy. There's so many metrics on which the performance is evaluated. So, you know, uh, other entrepreneurs in Nepal need to understand that and they need to, you know, change their business model accordingly. It is today 
far more professional than what it was maybe three, four years back. I was coming to the bringing in of international brands because yes. in the market, even yeah. today in the hospitality sector, mm. you're probably the one person who's bringing in a lot of uh, international brands, Correct. getting them connected with, uh, yeah. with the property yeah. owners. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to comment on that process? What are the challenges? How do you see things there? So actually, it, the process is actually reverse of, reverse of what you're saying. So I actually meet a lot of owners who want to set up a branded property and they ask for my help in helping them get the brand. And, uh, and the other thing, you know, what I do is that I also work with a lot of the brands because I've been in this hospitality industry for more than 25, 30 years. So a lot of the leadership of these brands for Southwest Asia, under which Nepal forms, I know many of them. And, and you know, and I'm someone who's really been promoting Nepal. They know about it. So when I go with them with a the proposal, I kind of are able to tweak it to, you know, how it will work here. Because you see, it's not just good enough just to have a brand. You take a, a city like Birganj or you take a city like, uh, say, Butwal, you know, what business does a brand have being there? You know, and because you could set up any hotel, if there's demand, it will go. But when you have a branded property, all the standards are there. There is a market for that and people are ready to pay that kind of money. So, you know, it is not just about Kathmandu. You know, Kathmandu, <laughs> nearly all the brands Everybody's are now represented right. very soon. Accor will be opening the, the Mercure. Mercure yes. And after that, there is no brand which is not represented in Kathmandu. <laughs> you know, so all the brands are there. So now the main market is outside of Kathmandu. So again, you have owners who are successful businessmen, who are maybe very important people in that city, and they want to set up a hotel, but they don't want to go and do a local, you know, job. Run it themselves. So yeah. So then they go for for this, and and this so and also you know that's what I negotiate with the brand. The kind of fees which I negotiate for Nepal in the smaller towns is not what the brand gets paid in India. They get much higher paid in India. Exactly. But they're ready also to support because they also see tourism today completely changing. You know, I go back to 2015 when I joined July 2015, Solti Crown Plaza, general manager from IHG. There was just IHG, the Crown Plaza, there was the Hyatt Regency. Right. Only two managed properties in Nepal and third was Radisson. It was a, a franchise property run by the owner. And between 2015 and 2020, you know, every brand has got signed up. I mean, yes. And between 2020 and 2024, so many of them have, have, have opened and set up shop and opened very successful hotels and all doing very well. A lot of these brands, as you said, yes, uh, they, they see potential because really there's no market yeah. perhaps in a place like Butwal and others. Yeah. Along that Indian border, our southern border, what is the potential like? And I think that's an area also a number of brands. We were yeah. surprised, Beer Guns. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I'll tell you, uh, you know, you take a city called Gorakhpur. Okay. Now, Gorakhpur is the middle of nowhere. It has no, you know, strong, say, tourism attraction. All right. Gorakhpur has a Radisson Blue. Gorakhpur has a Sarovar Premier. And Gorakhpur is coming up with a Courtyard Marriott and a holiday inn and maybe another property, okay. Now you have to understand that in India today, there is a huge boom in domestic tourism. And those guys are not limited to India. They are drive across the border. The border yes. So Butwal, a lot of our demand forecast included people coming in from India who wanted to come and stay in a Hyatt because even now there is no branded five-star hotel in Bhairava till now. So that will probably be the first hotel. It's going to probably open by the end of December or maybe early January 2025. And when it opens, it will be the first branded five-star hotel in the whole region. So we have some excellent properties. The Siddharth Vilas are very nicely made. There's the Tiger Palace. It's reopened, doing very well. There are two, three other hotels which are coming up. But nothing is there in the branded space. Now what happens is the customer has already decided he's going to come here and he's going to stay in Butwal. Now for us, we've got Lumbini, Butwal, Bhairava, three different places. For the customer who's coming by car, it's just a 15-minute drive. So he enters from the Sonali border. Yeah. At 20 minutes, he's there at Butwal. So he's like, yeah, that's good. I like to stay in a Hyatt. And so, you know, so, uh, so in India, all the, you know, the grade C towns is where hotels are coming up. In grade A towns, the, there is a huge saturation, there is no more space and there is no brand for a hotel to give.
you know, for a chain to give. Because they also have the area limitations of 5 kilometers. So, you know, so, for example, in a city like Delhi, the Crown Plaza brand, which I used to work for earlier, there are five Crown Plazas just in Delhi, Delhi. And there are probably, they'll probably sign up one or two more in Gurgaon. So, so when you look into uh, even the brands, they're also now expanding to these regions and they're also getting people to experiment and travel. So somebody says staying in Lucknow and so him going down to Delhi, he'd rather go to Gorakhpur. You know, then he might just come across the border. And the other thing what has made a very big difference is great cars. In, you know, I, I remember as a, as a young man, I won't even say a child, as a young man, I used to work for Oberoi Hotels. I've come to the Solti Oberoi as a young assistant manager on a holiday. And one of the high points of my holiday was roaming around in Toyota cars in Nepal. And they were taxis, you know, yes. all different colors. And I, I remember those times, we used to have those cameras, we took pictures and I went back and said, here it is. And in India, we just had, you know, Ambassador and yeah. Fiat. And those were like terrible cars, you know. And today, you have some of the best cars available in India at a knockdown price. Exactly. You know, the, you'll be surprised that many of the cities, because of pollution and sustainability, all national capital region, if your car is more than 10 years old, it is junk. So what people do when it is 8 or 9 years old, they sell it to a smaller place at a really low price. Low price. Okay. So there, so Mercedes, which may be costing maybe 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs in Delhi, well, in well when he cars. sold it for maybe 5 lakhs, now the guy, he's got a Mercedes, he's not going to take that to his factory every day. He said, let's make a trip down to Nepal. And I've been doing a lot of work in the provinces, exactly. talking to provincial governments, working with mayors, working with owners, because everybody has to work towards getting tourism right. And, and that is where this huge surge is. Unfortunately, as a country, we don't count the tourists coming by a road border if they are from India. Foreigners come by road border, we count because of an immigration process. But if we count that, there's a huge number coming there. I was coming to the other one, uh, point related to this. Yeah. Since the borders and Indians can drive across, it's so easy. What do you see as some of the problems? Perhaps our roads, after traveling on the yeah. Indian roads and they yeah. cross over yeah. maps, it's yeah. a little bit of a shock. Uh, and what other problems do Indians face? Because this is a market waiting for us to, to take. Yeah, yeah. Just allow them to come. Yeah. But I think in a lot of places, we create some hassles also for Correct. them. Correct. So, uh, so just last week, you know, there was a tourism dialogue organized by the Hotel Association of Nepal, along with USAID. And I was also one of the speakers in the infrastructure and connectivity yes. uh, section. So yes, infrastructure and connectivity are a problem. But there are a lot of other problems. You know, the biggest problem is currency. Getting currency is not available at the border. We don't have any currency exchange at the border. We have it at the airports. We don't have it at the borders. All right. The second thing is the UPI, though it's been launched, but it's still very under, you know, rated. We don't know whether the Indian UPI will work or not. And in India, UPI works everywhere. You go to, you go to buy vegetable and milk and grocer, you can pay by UPI, pay TM. But now they say Nepal is working, but very little. Credit cards may or may not work in some in these small places. So a lot of this business is cash transaction, and and you know an Indian currency is not for 500 rupee notes are not legal not tender in Nepal. So there are so one is issue is currency, and many times you will have police checks. They will find the currency and they will just confiscate it. So there are issues like that. Of course, at the border, you'll be surprised that guys with a satchel sitting with currency. <laughs> so you want Indian or Nepali? Yeah, many times I've gone by the border. I've been from Nepal Ganj to Lucknow. So you just go to the border and he Change gives you on the day rate, he'll give it to you. But that's all, you know, under the table. It should exactly. be far more done properly. So Nepal SBI Bank, uh, you know, had said they'll set up a counter at the border and exchange the money. So then it all comes in legally. Government gets tax on it. Exactly. And people are also then happy, at least, you know, they're not they doing something. Also, yes, Correct. The so one is that. Second is, you know, this, uh, this vehicle permit. See, normally you pay an X amount, you get a permit for three days. But many times there is no signage there to say, please take your permit. So those who know, they will get into that custom police area, take the permit and go. Many guys, they just get flagged, they go. But when they go back, sometimes they got caught and fined. Oh. And then they realize, you know, what, 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 what's been happening. So uh, also what happens is that, you know, when people come in, we also need to have so many places where they can visit. So, for example, in Nepal Ganj or Bhairava or Butwal or Biratnagar, there are a lot of local things to go to. The famous temples, 
you know but people don't know about it so we don't have any tourism agenda really so if you know it's good if you meet someone who talks to you tells you it's good but there are so many wonderful places for people to go to and we should have the maps it's not there on google so i think if we produce this we'll have far higher earning from tourism in that region when I mean, it's for that region it's not just that hotel property where the guest checks in he spends on food and beverage and uses the health spa and goes back or maybe plays some money in the casino it has to benefit the whole region then the region has to work towards it and now we have very uh, you know dynamic mayors but i don't know how tourism aware they are so i mean how do we start this dialogue with uh, local governments with the mayors uh with tourism stakeholders i mean because that's a whole market if we just right. we keep saying india is a big market we could target it right. tap into right but here's an opportunity and what do you think we should be doing perhaps ntb or some others maybe hand itself coming so, in and correct. working with so, the local so you see all our associations are headquartered out of kathmandu and that's where all the biggies sit okay but they all have chapters in these smaller places they have to make these chapters very active you know i i remember i had organizations like rotary or lions or uh, jcs or ypo you know they do a lot of work even in the It's chapters local, yes, yes. all right so similarly the fnccci has a tourism subcommittee they have a chapter tourism head the hotel association has a chapter you know area president yes, yes. This, there will be all your tan nata pata they will also have you know subcommittees so these guys need to all get together and work for benefit of tourism to create these things you know i remember when solti set up the nepal ganj hotel i used to make a lot of trips to nepal ganj and nepal yes. ganj that time there was no tourism in nepal ganj there was nothing and then i worked with the mayor who i happened to know he was very tourism positive and then you know and i told him that and he i said you know guys will come from the border so i said so they'll come for the casino so he said okay i will work with hotel owners and make them understand we need to set up casino so we did a lot of meeting with the larger hotel owners they were all two star three star hotel we upgraded to four star and they could get the casino then what the mayor did there was a large plot of land which was a marshy land you know it was so they were thinking what to do with it and then he converted that whole thing into a lake put in boats and it's one point of high point of visit you know when families come they want to go boating some of the lake some activity yeah the activity then you know they made some took out some budgets and made roads there's a black buck sanctuary in krishna sar it's a one hour drive those roads got done you know so like this then there's a bridge where is the, there is this um, this river where you can feed the fish okay. so you know so when you do stuff like that there's something to do yeah, for things to do and then you see india also has a large population of hindus and in nepal we have a lot of ancient hindu temples which have a huge uh, relevance you know oh. so we need to tell those stories if we correct. tell then we will sell and those and, small yeah. local destinations can be promoted correct. that way correct correct you know and that's how it works so just a, just an example in nepal ganj there is a temple where you have a khula darshan and you know as legend goes that when shiv ji was very angry one day with parvati his third eye opened and he and he and she got cut into a lot of pieces and all pieces and fell in different places so apparently the tongue fell in nepal ganj all right so in the khula darbar there is a shiva temple and they have a khula darshan khula darshan they close all the doors of the temple and they do and the priest has a special puja for you and then he uncovers this place and there is a silver tongue kept at the bottom okay. and it's a great thing to be blessed you know so that would attract a lot of indians of course but so so like this we have so much of heritage and culture we should be able to promote it then there is a lot of local culture you know you'll be surprised near nepal ganj because i have spent a lot of time there there is a wildlife place where you can go it's open sanctuary and you have tigers there yep you know so there are private farms people have got private farms where they go and you see a lot of wildlife coming there because there's a water khola which goes around so you know so we have to create these these things know about it and get together a government to sell it you know and also you see when you have to differentiate between tourist and a business guy 
like across the border i do understand a lot of smuggling happens people get lots of goods they don't pay taxes yeah. it goes from this side also from that side also it comes you control that but you don't control you know tourists so you treat everybody like a smuggler and so open your bag and show me what it is and then people get a little flummox they don't know what it is and they'll say show your papers where's your permit to drive into nepal and moment and moment the guy is somebody who's traveled quite often he'll say yeah but you don't need a permit this is it but somebody who hasn't who little fumbles He's then you know it's a good way to grease the palm or people get scared and things like that so those are again things you know which we need to work with as tourism bodies and that's what got discussed in the tourism dialogue also so i'm sure something is happening but but you know we can work and then there are a lot of ngos also every one has tourism as an agenda because it is the largest employment generator exactly. so the expertise can work there also for example you know in i did a five star hotel in birta mode i remember it was the first five star hotel it's called the kingsbury and once you know the owner called me in panic and he said oh paul you're coming i said yeah he said can i ask you to carry some baggage with you i said carry baggage he said no no my guys will deliver just book it in your name and bring it i said okay and they were like two massive cartons and i asked him what is this he said bread so what do you mean he said there's no bread a villain bit the more so i carried bread from bread from here them. so you know so when you set up hotels you set up bakeries you set up cafes you set Laundry, up restaurants everything. So you know because there's a whole local economy which grows and we need to create these economies the other side you're in contact you have good uh, relations with many of the brands that are in india international brands yes how do the brands perceive nepal as a destination so you know you'll be very surprised the brand see a huge demand growth for nepal all of them you know now of course we are hampered by the fitta act the foreign investment technology transfer act which is mistakenly taking royalty and sales commission to be the same thing and not differentiating between it so there's a bit of a hindrance right now but you know various bodies are working towards it and we've had very positive responses from the government whenever delegation gone and met but unfortunately the, the sachiv when the mantri has been changing so it's not taken to a resolution but the brands feel that nepal is a fantastic place for growth and they want to be in at least 8 to 10 cities in nepal okay and the brand don't just come in and put up a brand just because somebody going to pay them a commission they because that's what they take you know when they manage a hotel and this is what i tell owners i said you know they say oh sir brand aayega to mera kharcha badhega i said nahi he will make your hotel for you. very efficient he will make sure it runs because he's going to take some 8 9% of the earning from you 92% he's going to give you exactly so you have to realize that guy is your friend and he's going to do a fantastic job so before brands come in and i worked with many of the brands you know we've done this demand estimation what is the demand in the city what is future demand how much your business is coming across the border i was surprised none of our tourism bodies know that but the brands exactly. know that they have a fairly good idea how much business is coming across the border so you'll be surprised uh uh birtamor dulabadi that whole area and siliguri which is a really bustling city, Big city the demand projections were quite similar okay were quite similar you know and and that is the beauty of nepal it's like a hidden gem you know when you go you say oh wow it's like a mountains the cloud lifts you say wow oh, <laughs> and but we are not talking and we are not selling it also in terms of janakpur mm -hmm. because in india mm -hmm. now with ayodhya the temple yeah, being yeah. Uh, constructed yeah. and there's huge tourism yeah. domestic among themselves true how are we placing janakpur how are we positioning it because we should be also tapping in it's part of the ramayan there's no ramayan without sita yeah true so 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 janakpur there are at least three different owners who are coming out with five star hotel projects mm -hmm. all right currently janakpur doesn't have anything we've got some small hotels which are really poor so you know people still look at the pilgrimage and a lot of smart people they just look go to the janki devi temple and come back with a day trip from kathmandu just go and come back so we are missing out a lot of that business there a lot of talk you know the roads connectivity is there they even talking about extending the railway line up to janakpur, janakpur yeah. and janakpur railway line up to ayodhya so you know so that you can go by train they even talk of making it into regional international airport so uh, uh, nepal ganj is coming up with a regional international airport so like that you know uh, janakpur also they looking at things like that but it's all still talk and uh, and whichever five star hotels open 
it's going to be completely sold out. That's the kind of business which Janakpur has today. Are there any brands already signed up for Janakpur at the moment? Uh, um, see, till such time, the brand does not sign the hotel management or hotel franchise agreement. We can't talk about it. <laughs> but there so, are, are there like MOUs that. signed? Yes, there are MOUs signed. So, there is and, in the pipeline. And, and there are many new hotels coming up. But again, you do a new hotel, you don't have the market, then you're mm-hmm. stuck for domestic, which is at definitely a low rate. You know, and that's really where the challenge is going to be. So, Janakpur is also seeing some excellent development <coughs> coming up. Excellent development. As a, on another point, looking at the tourism infrastructure nationally or in the provinces, yeah. where do you see this? I mean, there are huge challenges. What are some of the main priority areas that perhaps the government should be looking at to build infrastructure? So, uh, so you know, uh, in Nepal, we always talk when we meet at various fora about getting a lot of volumes of people. Nepal is not a voluminous country. You can't do volumes, you know. You should look at the limited thing we have, which is all our mountain areas, you know. So they have excellent, um, you know, uh, areas for people to go to, but that's limited structure. So we have to look today at high value tourism coming in where we provide them that kind of a thing. So it means you you should be able to have much better vehicles. You should have safer mountain roads and you need to have, you know, better air facilities, air linkages, especially helicopters, you know. So, which means that probably putting in, you know, monitor, weather monitoring equipment, even in the mountains. My knowledge with, uh, you know, the air connectivity is very limited. I don't, I haven't got, I don't understand technical parts. But, you know, whenever a helicopter crashes, that's and which is by a very experienced pilot, so that kind of gives very wrong messaging, but it's a high value market. You know, there are so many uh, places in the mountains which are complete high value tourism. It is not a mass tourism product at all. Exactly. Moment you send mass tourism there, exactly. their rates are low, the spend is low. They will go in buses which give off a lot of fuel and they destroy pollution. The They'll carry a lot of plastics. They need a lot of water and all that waste will get generated. And we have no way of treating those. You see, in place in larger cities, we have municipal corporations which have waste treatment plants. We have ways to go and landfill. But you know, in the smaller places, you don't have all those things. So you're just dumping it into the environment. And we don't have sustainability practices. The awareness is missing. You know, so I feel those are the things which need to happen. And that's when we get high value tourism. So and whichever high value products have come up, they are extremely successful. Extremely Excellent. successful. Shintamani. For Shintamani, for example, uh, the Dwarikas, the Dhulikhel, yes. you know, uh, terraces, Kavya, these, the, all these products are, they are all $300 plus. Today, they're okay. selling at those kind of prices and they do a fairly good amount of business. So, I have a choice in the 10 owners. You set up a 30 room product like say Shintamani, okay, very high end and sell it at $1,000 plus. Or you oh. set up a 100 room hotel where even if you get $100, you're lucky. You're lucky so what do you want? You know, and then you hire so many staff, then you feed all those people. Then you set up a supply chain to get all the goods and then everything then start working on discount. That's not the way tourism in Nepal should grow. There are people looking for that huge experience and they'll come and spend that kind of money. And that is where the difference is going to be. You know, China has a lot of luxury travelers. All the luxury tourism in Thailand is all Chinese who are going for really high-end products. But so we can easily bring those people here because we've got all that there. But we have to put all that together. And it's so it's not really about mass tourism. We are not a mass tourism country. We cannot take. Yeah. And if we go mass, we'll finish our environment. 98% of my tourism is outdoors. Exactly. Barely 2% is indoors. <laughs> you know, and so so if I'm going to finish the outdoors in a no, matter of 30 that. years, my tourism is over. Then Nepal has nothing to offer to anyone. And that is why we need very strong environment laws. We need sustainability practices to come in. And that's where the provinces need to take a lead. It can't be center led. The policies and protocols are all in place, but the implementation has to be across these places. As a final question, Paul, sir. Yeah. What do you see? as primarily important right now for us to be doing maybe one, two, three, three top things that 
that can really enhance the hospitality sector and make it better. So one I feel is marketing. We have to market it as a country, as a destination. The, we are competing today with new destinations like Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. You know, that's your Asian thing. So we have to go okay. and first thing we have to do is really look into marketing. And then we have to all come together, you know, and not look at trying to do my own thing and get something on. Earlier it was very individualistic. That doesn't work. The, and, and that messaging has to be the same across whether it's a government body, it's an association, it's a provincial government, it's a tourism operator, an individual hotel or a travel agent. That messaging has to be common. We need to create that. That I think is the number one thing which we need to do. The second thing what we need to do very importantly is make it happen for the entrepreneurs. You see, tourism is today the biggest employer across Nepal, the biggest employment, direct employment and disguised employment. The largest employer as an industry is tourism. But tourism has nothing. They, it it doesn't even have industry status. Exactly. You know. So, the, so that is now once you give those status. Then a lot of things automatically start, start flowing in. Including financing. Including you know being heard. Including being able to influence changes. So I think that is number two which must happen. And third the way I see it is. That the tourism operators. And the hoteliers and the transporters and all people think have to see what are international trends. It's changing completely and they need to be aware and work towards those trends. Today, for example, health and hygiene is number one, you know. So when COVID was happening, we were all scared. Everybody yeah. was doing their own thing. But today it's kind of vanished. Forgot. Just to give you one thing, then international certifications. How much of international certifications do we have? for any one of the things which we do. And they're very easy to get. They're not too difficult to get, but we have no certifications. So, you know, when somebody is choosing, he's looking at these kind of things. So he sees nothing as a local product, you know. Now, when you, when you have a branded product, where the brand is a big advantage, this comes as faith that comply. It's already existing in everything because that's what they do. That's what they stand for and things like that. So in Nepal, it's not that we should do only branded tourism. But we should get all these certifications for our thing so that we are internationally recognized as a safe destination and we have all our infrastructure in place to be able to connect if you have a problem. See, the biggest thing is that if you have an accident, if you fall sick, then what? If you get lost, what's going to happen to you? You know, you go hiking, get lost, people get lost. So then, you know, when people outside look at Nepal, they say, oh, if that happens, you're going to die. You know, and that is a very wrong thing. So, so therefore, we have to be able to counter these kind of things. And that's my top three agendas for tourism for Nepal. Thank you so much, Utpal, sir, for taking the time and joining us today. My pleasure. Terence, thank you so much. And I really enjoy all your issues. I've learned so much of Nepal from your magazine, <laughs> you know, and that, thank you so and much that brings that. the, you know, the wanderer in me wanting to go and visit these places. And I visited some of them after reading about it in your magazine. I think Nepal traveler should be there in every hotel lobby, in every hotel room and at the airport and within the airlines, you know, which you are doing for some of them. So thank it's you. always a pleasure meeting you. And thank you so much for all the work you do thank for tourism so much, in Nepal. Sir.